one of the most influential short stories in horror literature is The Most Dangerous Game from writer Richard Connell. After its publication in 1924, it left an indelible mark on both action-adventure stories and darker stories crossing into the horror realm. The basic premise has Saroff, a big game hunter, seeking the ultimate thrill by hunting the most dangerous game around. Humans. The first adaptation of the story was filmed in 1932. It was actually shot at night on the same sets used during the day by King Kong. There were many other connections between the two films, including its producers, Marion C. Cooper and Ernst B. Schoedzak, the latter of whom also co-directed The Most Dangerous Game. Also, producer David O. Selznick was the studio executive shepherding Kong, and Kong leading actors Fave Ray and Robert Armstrong play substantial parts. These two films were also linked in that they were adventure stories made with a horror touch. But surely you don't think that anyone who has hunted leopards would follow you into that ambush? The story is about survival in dire circumstances. It features a mad hunter, and there are gruesome kills, at least by the standards of 1930s cinema. The film is included in several horror compendiums, but had it been released as is today, it would only be listed as an action-adventure film, or at most, a thriller. Despite this, the most dangerous game is a fundamental and genre-defying film in the history of horror cinema, and also, actually, for action cinema. The themes of survival and the reduction of characters from civilized humans to hunted animalistic prey has echoed through film history. Let's take a look at films that have been influenced by the short story, both those that fit in the horror realm and those that are more in the action or drama tradition. Let's start with non-horror entries, as they tend to show their storytelling link to Richard Connell's tale the most. There have been several such films made, including A Game of Death in 1946, an early effort from Robert Wise of Sound of Music and The Haunting fame. Then, there were a pair of films in the 1950s, the Richard Widmark thriller Run for the Sun, and the low-budget Bloodlust. Several other low-budget films got in on the action, including Turkey Shoot in Australia. Then, in the 1990s, two action films were released within a year of each other. In Hard Target, the poor schmuck being hunted was played by Jean-Claude Van Damme, which of course meant that he was extremely capable at fighting back. Thus, the hunters were the actual poor schmucks. It is worth seeing for Van Damme fans and John Woo completionists and, as always, for the wonderful Lance Henriksen, but still, it's a minor effort. A few months later, Surviving the Game came out. It was also an action movie, one with a great cast, but it came a little closer to the original story in that Ice-T wasn't quite as obvious a guaranteed survivor as the muscles from Brussels. <laughs> Then came Battle Royale. The dystopian thriller was based on a novel by Kushon Takami, but on a thematic level it shares a close bond with Richard Connell's 1924 short story. The film was brutal, and absurd, and fascinating, and it gained widespread acclaim upon its release in 2000. Battle Royale's harsh dystopia, where schoolchildren are forced to fight to the death, also comes closer to the horror genre, mainly because of the brutality of the filmmaking and because of the moral questions asked by the narrative. There's far less horror and way more sci-fi in The Hunger Games, based on the Suzanne Collins Young Adult Trilogy. The films are also certainly dystopian. Teenagers are again hunted, this time for a game show and for political suppression. Speaking of suppression, Hunger Games was deeply criticized in some online communities as a ripoff of Battle Royale. That always annoyed me, as both films, and the books they're based on, owe a lot to the most dangerous game. Now, what I don't want is for people to go and say those films were ripoffs of the Richard Connell story, because that's not the point. Michelangelo wasn't the first artist to sculpt David, nor was he the last. Bernini had a stunning David statue as well, and the subject of David versus Goliath has been used by several artists in several mediums. 
So what is my point? Simple. Art informs art. The most dangerous game created, or if not created, it at least established a new genre that worked both for action cinema and horror cinema. The new ideas Condal introduced inspired other artists to create similar stories, based on similar themes. But they aren't rip-offs, because the films now belong to a subgenre. We see similar stuff in regards to Frankenstein. Weird Science is also technically a Frankenstein story, and so are most tales of man creating robots. They are natural extensions of the tropes established by Mary Shelley. Another example of the phenomenon is Groundhog Day, which itself was a riff on the time travel narrative established in the story 1201. In recent years, the Groundhog Day plot has been cleverly reused in many films, including the brilliant sci-fi film Edge of Tomorrow and the amusing Happy Death Day. But these new films aren't rip-offs, they are members of a newborn subgenre. With The Most Dangerous Game, we've had more time to ease into the subgenre it created. And hell, the story is essentially a hunting story made into a horror narrative. So it comes from a hunting origin. Now, let's look at the horror adaptations, the ones that clearly belong in the genre. And with them, let's ask the question, why is the most dangerous game fundamentally a horror story? There aren't many good examples from older horror films, but in recent horror cinema, we've seen the concept used a lot, and the films are usually quite good. The Belko experiment forced a bunch of unlucky office workers to hunt and kill each other until there's only one remaining. The film is closely related to the Connell story, but different enough not to be a remake. Founder. The very funny, ready or not, added a satanic twist to the genre. But aside from a mildly hinted at supernatural element, the film is at its core a hunting movie. Poor Samara Weaving marries into a family, only to discover they perform a ritual, a deadly game of hide and seek, on those new additions to the family unlucky enough to pull a certain card from a certain box on their wedding night. I highly recommend this one. Another woman introduced to a messed up family situation can be found in Your Next. Here, the family is the hunted ones, by forces from the outside. Similarly, there's the Purge franchise, which despite an underwhelming and under-budgeted first entry into the series, managed to take the concept and run with it on a societal level. It became an incredibly successful franchise, adopting the ideas from Connell's story, transferring them into a modern context. But despite some socio-political commentary, the Purge films tend to focus mostly on the hunting aspect because it is a tried and true horror trope. The hunting genre is about people being hunted by someone evil. In The Most Dangerous Game, it is Saroff, a vaguely foreign sounding game hunter. And in the stories that followed, there's your fellow office workers, the in-laws, the stalkers from outside, or society at large. The key word here is hunting. You know who else hunts humans? Michael Myers. Jason Voorhees. Freddy Krueger. Basically, add any iconic slasher killer, whether human or undead, and their purpose is to hunt. The only difference between them and Saroff is that Saroff declares his intentions. He hunts humans because it is the most dangerous game. Myers and Warhees and others hunt for different reasons, but they remain hunters. And they clearly have an advantage over their prey, until that prey starts hunting back because they are the most dangerous thing to hunt. The most dangerous game is thus horror, because it created the groundwork on which slasher horror and stalker horror was based. Sure, those slasher films have many influences, including directors like Mario Bava with Bay of Blood, and Hitchcock with Psycho but they certainly also have ancestral connections with Richard Connell's story. The idea of being hunted is a basic primal fear, whether you're being hunted by foreign people like Saroff, or predators from space, or game show contestants, or in-laws. It is a fundamental piece of human fear, one that predates the safety of modern living. And that is what horror cinema often seeks to evoke. 
It is the fear we felt in our past, from before we became the most dangerous things on the planet. This is a fear we can't leave behind, probably even a fear we shouldn't leave behind. Honestly, playing games of survival and being game for a hunter are a big part of who we are. To take that away from us would be to remove a massive part of our identity as mortal creatures. And similarly, to take the hunt out of horror cinema would likely kill the genre for good. We don't want that. So whether you prefer action or horror, or you like both, keep enjoying the most dangerous game and all its grandchildren. It is, after all, what gives life some zest. <coughs> My name is Wolfcraft. This is History of Horror. I'd sure appreciate you liking, sharing, and subscribing if you haven't already. Join me next time for episode 21, Mario Bava, Genre Maker. If you want to check out my other works, I am an author. My sci-fi novel, God of Desolation, is available on Amazon, and my upcoming mystery novel, Richly Drawn, can soon be pre-ordered from Inkshares.com. Thanks a plenty.